Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 136 for Monday, October 16th, 2017. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast by foreign about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Las Gatas, California, I'm Paul Kent. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. You know, I was traveling uh, a week before last, well, actually last week, yeah. uh, and I was in New Orleans, and our friend over at Cover Band Central, Steve Witchell, was cool enough to invite me to sit in, but I was so busy. I couldn't get over there to oh. sit in with him. So Steve, if you're out there, thank you for the invite. That sucks. I really want to do that to be able to say I played with Steve and be able to say I played in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. Yeah. <laughs> but man, it was busy and I just couldn't get over there and I felt terrible. He he pinged me a couple times and yep. I, you know, I just it the week just got away from me. So yeah. thanks, I, Steve. I let's hope it happens again sometimes. Yeah, that's how those trade shows go when you're, you know, you're there for a conference, man. It like starts to, I I've, I have that. We all have that happen, right? Where you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to be in town, but you're not really in town. You're just, yeah. yeah, you just happen to be in a place that seems like New Orleans, but you don't get to actually be and hang out in New Orleans much. So, yeah. No, I'm in a big, big cement tube for five days. That's it. Right. And then and then you get in a smaller aluminum tube to head back home. And then that's yes, the end of it. go home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So and then I got back from New Orleans and uh, immediately the festivities started beginning for my daughter's wedding, which was Saturday. So uh, it was it's been a whirl since pretty much the 6th of October to today. We're recording this morning. I'm actually chilling out a little bit today, trying to get my feet back under me, but uh, it was pretty cool. You know, a lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, the coolest of which to share here is that my daughter's wedding, my band played and I got, I got to listen to my band. I was given special dispensation that I could, like I sit in on two or three songs, but mostly I was in the audience for this and it okay. was awesome. Man. It was awesome. Hey, that's great. That's awesome. So it was, it was uh, Steve Syacotis who we've had on this show before, who who filled in your role th for those gigs. Is that right? That's right, my buddy Steve. He did a great job. Really appreciate the time he put in. Our band is not an easy sub gig, right? We have a lot of interesting things in our songs, and you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. But uh, he was he's a pro, and he yep. just did his homework, and uh, it was cool. And uh, I was being asked all night long, "Is it weird?" Yeah. To listen to your band. Like, yeah. have you ever done that? Have you ever like couldn't make a gig or you purposely subbed yourself for some reason and listen to your band play? So uh, it has happened when, when I first joined fling, I was one of two drummers. Um, and so I, I, that, but that was sort of, that was a normal thing to see. Right. But still like, Oh, this is, I mean, you learn stuff in, in that environment. It wasn't weird because it was, it was exactly what, you know, was sort of happening. It was a jam session that, that then was taken to the stage. So, um, so that made sense, but you still learn a lot kind of watching your band. You're like, Oh, I see how this works. But then when we did the most recent, I, I think I mentioned our, our bass player sort of took the lead and organized uh, sort of a, a, a jam uh, music evening uh, over the summer. And there were moments of that where there was effectively fling without me with another drummer playing. And, uh, and yeah, that's, um, it is a little weird, especially when it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is weird. <laughs> well, so for me, it wasn't weird and I'll tell you why. So first of all, obviously I was busy with father of the bride duties, which is, you know, its own thing. Sure. And, uh, from the downbeat, so the band learned the first dance song, which was beautiful. It was uh, The Air That I Breathe by the Hollies. I'm going gonna, gonna to pause you right here because we're having a Skype issue, and I don't want it this to get screwed up. So we're going to stop here. Uh, All right. So first dance, the house rockers kicked it up for you. Yeah. So, and again, the question was, you know, it was weird for me. And right. I was like very much in enjoy the moment mode. And so my first reflection was, damn, this is a good band. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. it was really wondering, you know, Steve's a great musician. So him playing my part was not weird. I mean, he sings better than me. And so, you know, the three part harmonies on some of these things were absolutely stunning. That's awesome. And so 
the first thing that started watching over with me was just this like, oh man, my band is really good, you know, like to totally listen to it from that perspective. So there was this like washing over of joy that it was just fun to see my friends be so good at their craft. Yep. That was kind of cool. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, the second thing was watching the audience like go crazy because it was like a really fun wedding and it was a party and, and uh, people responded to everything that was played. Dance floor was full all night, you know, just fun, 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 fun. And for all these people to kind of come up to me and say, oh, this band, your band is great. Your band is great. Right. That was really fun. That's you know? cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, that the vibe of that is set up for success. I can totally see how that was not weird. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And it was, you know, it was a great playlist and it was kind of fun because it was a wedding playlist, right? Like, you know, sometimes we mostly my fault have the temptation to want to be a little too clever about things, but really at a wedding, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, there's a reason why wedding songs work. There's like, totally. cause they appeal to everybody. They, you know, there's songs everybody can tap their toes to and get in and it, it gets the energy going, you know, yeah, you're not hired. You're not hired to play a wedding. And I realize that this is a different scenario, but in a general sense, you're not hired to play a wedding to be clever. You, right. you are hired to entertain, find the low hanging fruit and and just play the heck out of it. You are you are a um, a contributor to the vibes success. Yeah, you it's are not, not about you. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. And, that's a good uh, way to put it. Yep. Yeah. And so that that was going on. It was a really, really fun playlist all the way down to Sweet Caroline at the end, which everybody sang along to, of course. Of course. And uh, but uh, so, OK, was, wait, I got to ask about that. I, and I'm sorry to interrupt because the first time. We ever played Sweet Caroline in the Macworld All Star Band. Everybody on the on the East Coast knew exactly what was going to happen, and knew and it was Chuck uh, Latornis, who I think actually you saw last week in New Orleans. Yeah, uh, but it was he, him that that brought it in, and he's from New Jersey, so he gets the East Coast vibe of of what happens with uh, Sweet Caroline, especially with Red Sox fans, and. All of you, you included, but everybody from the West Coast was like, "Why are we playing this song? Like, this is stupid." And we're like, oh, no, no, trust us. Did it's we say stupid? Was stupid actually the word? I don't, I'm not going to say it was, I'm not going to say it. But, but you're like, there's better song. I think it was more like eh, this. I don't like, I don't think this one's going to like, we didn't play it well in rehearsal. There's other things we should put on the list. And those of us from the East Coast were like, oh, but, but yeah, but there's a, there's a thing that's going to happen because there's enough people. <laughs> the, the thing trust, the thing. trust us on this. And, and I think that was the first time that, that you and Chris certainly had experienced that, that that whole, you know, crowd sing along thing that happens with Sweet Caroline. But what from what you're telling me here, this has now completely permeated and everybody everywhere knows what to do in Sweet Caroline. Is that is that right? Evidently. But, uh, you know, this wedding was a little weird because a third of the room was from New York. A third of the room was from Georgia. Right. And uh, and the rest of the room was from California. And uh, OK, uh, so but there was no yeah. there was no doubt. I mean, I mean this, was a, <laughs> this was a unifying moment and it was really kind of cool. That's and cool. Again, you know, when grandma participates, you've done it right at a wedding. That is always I, I actually look for that when we've been playing weddings with. Uh, uptown is like, okay, who's not up on the dance floor? And yep. yeah, when you see, when you're looking for grandma and she's like right at the front, cutting the rug, you're, you're in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. If you only play to the kids, uh, you know, I guess it depends on the wedding, but sure. you know, I, I think if you want to create a memory for everyone in the room, you think about your playlist and you know, that type of thing. So, so the band did that. They, they, uh, my guys uh, surprised me with a little roast of me before they played all star. They wrote this, they wrote an original little vignette of music, which was hysterical and really, really fun. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, I gotta say, I, my heart was full, man. I mean, a, like I said, to hear my guys be so good at what they do B to see it go over like that. And then the last part of it was just, you know, very humbling, uh, to see how much preparation, thought, love, passion that they gave for me, which yep. was a tremendously humbling thing. I mean, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be surprised is the thing we kind of have that relationship, but it was above and beyond. And, uh, it was really, it was just great, man. I mean, to the point where I, like, I was like, this is what a wedding should feel like. We're a wedding band. <laughs> oh <laughs> right? yeah. Right? Whereas I never think of us that way before, but I was right. like, you know what? 
this where we were, <laughs> it was a really good vibe. And we certainly had the songs and it was just, it was fun. And uh, my family was overjoyed, you know, with the, with how much fun all of our, I mean, did you know a wedding? Yeah. It's all, it's your whole life in one room, right? It's, I mean, it's every corner of your life, right? Right. right. So that's true. It was, it was really cool anyway. So that's great. I, yeah. So, okay. So I'm curious just, um, because you guys aren't a wedding band and you're, uh, you're not the quietest band I've ever played with. Um, uh, I'm curious how, like, when you do an event like that, where you have to start out with the first dance and, and, and those things were typically, and again, I understand this wasn't typical cause it's, you know, everybody knows it's, you know, the band, the band belongs to the father of the bride and that sort of thing. But, yeah. but did, did the band keep the volume low for those first tunes and kind of ease into not necessarily the energy, but the volume of it, or were you at sort of normal house rocker? It's time to play volume. Um, no. So a few things. Well, I was concerned about the volume as well, yep. but I somewhat consciously left it to Bill. To uh, of course. Out. Right. You know, I, right. I didn't, I didn't want to be that guy. Yes. And you know, they're all paid to be professionals. And so let's see, so let's see what's going to happen there. So I, I quite consciously did not weigh in and, you know, say, Hey, make sure the volume's all right. But first song they played was the air that I breathe and it was no horns. Okay. Yep. And it was, it was nice. Right. Sure. And then the first three or four songs when the band was kicking in, um, I thought was excellent volume. I mean, the, the dance floor filled of all ages. That's great. And it was cool. Now, funny enough, my dad, my own dad left about a halfway quarter of the way through the second set, two set gig. And, uh, and he was like, your band is too loud for me. So, <laughs> but that was the only one I heard of. But again, the, the dance floor was full of people of all ages all night long. It was louder at the end for sure. Yep. Well, um, and, and, and that's kind of normal. I would think like, like when I do a wedding with up down, we're insane about volume coming out of the gate, but then certainly by the middle of the second set, if not the entire second set, it's, it's effectively a rock show at that point. Yeah. I would say that. And uh, again, the, you know, the density of bodies, you know, on the floor in front of, instruments that are projecting acoustically and, you know, even in front of the PA to some degree. Yeah. I mean, it's just the volume soak up factor, you know, kind of changes over time. And so, uh, but Bill did a really, really fine job. Awesome. And uh, I like it, the best test was that there were people of all ages on the dance floor until the very end. Nobody's covering their ears. It was too loud. Just my cranky dad who I love. So, but, so we've uh, got the grandma factor and then we've also got the grandpa factors. Which yeah. is what you're telling yeah. me here. Grandpa yeah. was evidently a little bit more sensitive, That's right. but he was, you know, he was really, you know, quite, you know, he's heard the man many times. And sure. So I don't know, but um, here, here's the coolest thing. So the band actually learned Hava Nagila. Wow. Mendoza played the clarinet on that. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it was a very authentic, it, it was, it had this funky vibe of a rock and soul band playing Nav Hava Nagila. So it, they played it great, you know, sped it up and everything like that. The, the vibe was just really pumping and driving, but it kind of had that really kind of cool thing. Like these are, these are great musicians that can play any piece of music, music you put in front of them and it'll come off, you know? Right. So right. it was kind of cool. So that that was very memorable for all of us, and uh, you know, put the kids up in the chairs and all that type of thing. So that was that was just kind of fun. And we played one slow song all night. Uh, Let's get it on. People f lost their mind for that. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it was it was just cool. And That's and I great. guess yeah, mostly to get that perspective about how good your bandmates are is a really overwhelmingly cool feeling. Like, you know it when you're playing with them, yes. you know, like you're in, yes. you're in a moment, totally. but to be able to take that in, not only from your ears to see from that vantage point, but to be amidst the people that are being affected by it. That was pretty, pretty damn cool. And pretty special, pretty unique. I mean, most of uh, certainly, you know, like I said, I, I had that one experience over the summer, but um, that was different, uh, entirely different from this because the set list was a little more navel gazy. And so there was, it, it wasn't like there's my band doing what my band does. It was, there's my band playing stuff that we probably would never play with another drummer. 
Yeah. You know, at least never play in front of people because it's not really engaging. So, so from that standpoint, no, I haven't experienced like what my, what it's like to go watch my band. And, uh, and I would imagine most of us listening here have not experienced that because that's, that's pretty difficult. So, yeah. And again, I take into account, it might've been in the environment, right? It, you of know, course. It, was, it was my party. And so I didn't expect to be with the band. So right. if I was sick or ill or, you know, like, you know, your situation, you know, that, that some different material being played, that might have been weird. But it was funny because I was being asked all night long. Right. Like it was it was clearly and I, I would have thought it would have been more apparent to people. Well, of course, I'm not going to play in the band while my daughter's getting wedding. So, I, right. I, you know, but people were like, is this weird for you? Is this weird for you? And, and I have to say emphatically, it was not at all weird. There was not a moment of weird. That's great. All- that's All as cry. it should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that was that was a good musical weekend for me. That's great, man. Huh. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. That's cool. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I don't think I've played since we talked last. In fact, I know I haven't. I, I had a stretch there where I was playing uh, a lot in a lot of different places, like every day of the week, moving around. We had rehearsals for a couple of things and then performances that were all intertwined and other stuff. But um, so, so I, I, and I actually, I, I was happy to have the time off from it to, you know, actually spend like some time at my job in a, in a real way yeah. and, <laughs> and in with my family. Like we had, I don't know, we had a Saturday night together or whatever last weekend and Everybody's like, uh, or even maybe even a whole day together or something. And the family's like, this is kind of weird. I'm like, isn't this nice? They're like, okay. <laughs> like we're used to you not being here as often as you've been. So yeah, yeah. we've got to adjust. But, um, but we did go uh, a week ago, Sunday, we went and saw Bruno Mars, which um, he, he, the guys he, in my band have seen that. So that's the best live show they've seen. What'd you I, think? I saw one of them say that I saw it. Yeah. Your sax player say that. Um, I've seen him. This is the second time I've seen him. Uh, the first time was was much better only because of the sound. It was really weird. We it, Our seats were in like a, a what I would have thought was a good spot. Uh, but the sound at the Boston Garden the other night, which normally like that room normally sounds excellent for a concert. Really? And so it was big. So yeah, tall. But it's tall, but they've they've got uh, baffles in the ceiling and stuff. I mean, that building when it was rebuilt uh, 15 years ago, maybe maybe longer probably 20. Uh, it, uh, it was built for shows. And I remember the first show I saw there was REM and I couldn't believe how good it sounded. It was like, mm. what is going on? But um, for whatever reason, the other night they, they had the drums, like not just the bass drum, all the drums, like the snare drum and the hi-hat were just way too loud. Mm. And uh, so you, you couldn't hear vocals all that clearly. It, it kind of faded in and out through the night. So, um, so there was that, but getting past that, and for the most part, we were able to sort of ignore that. Um, he puts on a great show. The stage was amazing. Um, he and his he and his band, it's it, yes, it's it's billed as Bruno Mars, but they are a band, and they interact like a band. And and from that standpoint, I love it. I mean, it's you're getting to go see a you know a rock band go play these tunes, and they yeah. play the heck out of them. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're they kind of remind me in a lot of ways. They remind me of of your band. It it's this very um, kind of testosterone fueled. It would be it would it would change that band dramatically if there was one woman on stage with them. And I, mm. and I don't say that to be sexist. I just say it like they are very much. It's the boys club on stage is what you're watching. You know, this is an interesting topic, because as I told you, as we've been thinking about getting a new drummer. Yeah. And starting, you know, there's there's one woman drummer who who is emerged whose chops are awesome. Yeah, sure. Um. I guess at the end of the day, there's two conversations. There's one, who's the best musician? Mm-hmm. And then the other one is, you know, is it reasonable to protect the vibe, to protect the vibe of protect? I don't know if that's a word I want to use. Yes. Preserve, maintain. Right. Preserve, maintain. Yeah. You know, that, and that's interesting because when, when uh, the woman came up, I've always thought that being a guy band was part of our brand. You know, that testosterone thing. Sure. Um. And, and interestingly, most of the guys in my band, you know, they just want the best player. Yeah. 
Yes. I, and I, it, it, so I, if, I, I need to be careful here so that I, I, so that somebody doesn't misinterpret what I'm about to say. Um, picking the best player, regardless of the vibe that they bring with them is, is the wrong decision. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't hire a woman like that. Well, I think a, what you're about a, to say is best is a subjective thing that it, has many components. Well, to it. well, it, it is. But you could you could like blindly listen to, you know, 10 drummers and say, OK, that one is the best player, you know, and even that's subjective. But if all you're evaluating is their ability to, you know, sit behind a kit and play right, that that's one factor. And you certainly need to to be aware of that obviously with, with what you're doing. But if that's the, if that's the only factor, if that's the, you know, biggest priority, I think you got to be care- Like you got to find somebody that's going to fit in with your band. Yeah. And that might very well be a woman for you guys. Like I, I right, think, right, right. I think that could work out well in your band, but it would definitely change things. But I think anybody, and this is the point I'm trying to make. Anybody coming in is definitely going to change things. Yeah. And so you kind of need to you need to be ready for that. And perhaps it's it's from that angle that everybody in your band is saying, well, let's just find the best musician. We know it's going to change because it's a different person. We might as well just go with the best musician and go from there. Like, well, yes, but you you want like you don't want that person to be an a-hole. Right. (laughs) right? I mean, it's like just because they're the best musician, maybe not the right guy or girl. You know. so, so let me just ask you, because it's a reality check and I'm actually quite blind in this, is just saying that part of our brand is that we are a boys club by definition. Is that wrong? Is that is that sexist? I think I'm, it's, I'm really blind to it. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm bad at this, too. I, I think it's accurate. Now, whether that means that that's what it should be going forward or not, I mean, I, I don't know. But but I would definitely and I did say that. Part of your brand is that boys club thing, just like Bruno Mars band. Part of his oh. brand is that boys club thing. It It is that it's here's the guys on stage being the guys. Yeah. Uh, and there's a certain vibe to our there banter. Is. There's a yeah. certain vibe to our humor. You know, there's a yep. whole thing. Yep. And it strikes me as it would be quite different. Again, mm-hmm. better, worse to be seen. Totally. Should we get that far? But, you know, this, the, the other side of this is we've often had the conversation like, well, we could work more, more weddings, more higher paid gigs. Those bands almost by definition all have um, a female singer, right? Yes. yes. Is that sexist to say we're going to go grab, uh, you know, another sex to fill a role because it would make our brand more no. appealing in a different way? I no, mean, but it's I the don't, same, I don't the same think problem, about it. Right? Yeah, but I, I mean, right. It, it is. Today's world, people get very sensitive about it. And, and for some good reasons. And, and then for others, it, I don't think they are good reasons. I think it's people being sensitive because they want to be sensitive. And, um, and then that can get, that can actually be a bad thing when the pendulum swings too far. But, but from, from what, from what you just said, it's no different than saying, I'm going to put on uh, you know, a theater production of the last five years, which is a play, you know, although I guess really this one could, could, could be cast as there's two men or two women, but like <laughs> but it's a really bad example. Uh, but it's, you know, the, the way it's written uh, in the book is it's a man and a woman. And I mean, you'll get that much more granular. You, you'll say, okay, we need a tall, you know, white woman for this role. And we need a blonde woman, like, you know, blonde male for that. And we need a child. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is what it takes to put on those types of shows. Now, taking that same logic with your, with your band, you know, having a female singer opens up the door to playing all these tunes that, might not come across the way you want them to come across if a male sang them. Not that, right. not that a guy couldn't sing a Whitney Houston tune, but it, you know, if Nick is up there and Nick would probably kill, like I want to <laughs> dance with somebody, right? But but that's going to come across very differently than if you had a woman singing, I want to dance with somebody. It's just the reality of the way that that. So we plays. actually do a Supreme song, right? Yeah, we used to play Back in My Arms in the Responders, which was like you, you guys. It was like yeah, all so testosterone. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> we do Come See About Me. And yeah. it actually, part of it is is the the fun of it is that juxtaposition that it's a Supreme song being played by all guys. Totally. That's part of the, inter- the entertainment value of but it. But that's what I'm saying is it you like that's part of it. You can't 
avoid that for most people. Some people won't even know or they'll recognize the tune, but they won't know from where. And so it doesn't come across as guys playing a Supremes tune. But for people that know the song and like you said earlier, you know, when you're playing weddings, the goal is to play songs everybody knows. So if everybody knows that Whitney Houston sang I Want to Dance with Somebody and you guys play it, you know, and have a guy sing it. Well, then they're going to say, wow, that guy either did an awful job at singing Whitney Houston or did a great job, but there's, that's going to be part of the conversation. Right. Sure. And sure. and that, like you said, it's that juxtaposition that adds entertainment value. Maybe that separates you from other wedding bands. Generally though, people that don't know your band are going to hire based on what they think they want, not what you tell them you're bringing to the table again, because it's not the wedding band's job to be clever. Not the wedding jobs band to be clever is true. That's that's kind of where I'm, I yeah. come from on this. And and, you know, we've got um, Kelly in Uptown Celebration and she's, um, you know, I mean, she's she's in the band just like the rest of us because she serves a role and her role is to sing the female parts. You know, so there it is. My role is yeah, to but, play and, the drums. But that's that's actually emphasizes the point is like. If if your goal is to make your band work. Yep. Um, and this is a differentiator, you know, in a world of wedding bands that have kind of a fairly, you know, one guy singer, one girl singer, that type of thing. Yep. We're different in this way. So is it sexist for us to be different in that way? And it really, no. I'm, I'm, I'm more like, I just have a very, I have three daughters. I, I, yeah. I, I play with many women in many other projects. Yep. The house rockers. I don't, I don't consider myself a sexist. I certainly hope I'm not a sexist. I'm listening to myself have this conversation with you and I'm like, yeah, maybe am, I am. am. I, am yeah. yeah, exactly. Am I yeah. entirely blind to my position here? But, or is it wrong to just have a, you know, your brand is this should you in, and you know, it is a differentiator in, in the wedding market. And when people come to see us, they know what they're getting. They're getting yeah. a guy band, you know, that, that kind of has that testosterone thing. That's what you get with us. I, I think your problem is going to be that, most people like that are sitting down today to plan a wedding for next year aren't going to be th like the, the, the clever band idea isn't going to play with 90% of them mm -hmm. now. It, and, and, and a hundred percent of those 90% aren't going to know who the house rockers are. So they're not going to say, well, I know they don't have a, a female singer, but they're awesome. So let's go hire them. Like if you can get to that point, then you're good. Right. But the trick is getting there. So now you're playing to this 10 percent of the, the the potential market and maybe it's more than 10. I don't know, but I don't think it's it's not 50. Right. That that are going to be intrigued by a wedding band. Just guys. Tell me more. It's going to be. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I got to worry about caterers and where the heck we're going to do this thing. And my mom's Very down true. my throat. Right. It, it like they need to invest their mental energy in many things. And so it's like, all right. Uh, yeah. Send me videos of these four bands. And great. OK, we'll go to the, the showcase. We'll watch them and, and you know, we'll pick one and we're done. Yeah. It's so I, I, I can I can share that an overwhelmingly high percentage of our wedding business is people who know us or refer us. Right. Not totally people who just yep. are looking for a band. Right. Yep. So and we don't play that many weddings. And, you know, some of this is. Some of this is, is not we're not truly a top 40 band. You know, it has to be we, we're good for second weddings. We're awesome for second weddings. Yes, you are. But that that's first true. wedding market is a little tough. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't. Huh. See, there you go. Now you can differentiate yourself, right? Yep. yep. It's We're bring the, the boys greatest, club to your second. Bring the boys club wedding. to your second wedding. Yeah. You always need more men on the job. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, maybe that, maybe that yeah, won't play so back well. That down a little day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Hey, so I don't know about in your area, but in my area, there are petty tributes exploding all over the place. I think I shared. Same. Yeah, yeah. there are. Yeah. So so I'm doing one on Thursday and uh, really looking forward to it. And I've gotten great response. The, ven the venue is sold out of the reservations they take. There's, it looks like there's going to be a waiting list. It's really kind of cool. And so we're actually doing our rehearsal for it uh, tomorrow night to play on Thursday. Um but two, two more have popped up. Three more have popped up. There's a couple of petty tribute bands in the area that were able to get, you know, I don't, I don't know whether it's a venue saying, hey, we should hop on this now and let's do it. You know, because mm -hmm. you know, usually there wouldn't be a Saturday night opener at a decent venue, you know, within a certain amount of time. Right. So when they move people around to accommodate petty tribute bands, there's a, a, 
at another venue about 20 minutes from here, there's kind of like a local musicians tribute. You know, there's about 20 musicians and they're doing something different. So are there a lot going on by you? Yeah, I, um, you, you know, because I was looking for a gig as a drummer when I found the Uptown Celebration thing what, earlier this year, I guess, um, I still get like I'd set up some Craigslist searches and I'd never turned them off because they're sort of filtered into a box. And I just read them it, more for the entertainment value of seeing, you know, what's going on. And it actually does sort of give me a pulse on on what's happening mm -hmm. out there. And yeah, in the last two weeks, I've seen uh, no less than three people like saying I'm putting together a petty tribute. I need, you know, mostly it's like, I need another guitar, bass, drums, keys. It's like, um, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I need everything. Right. What exactly yeah. are you putting together? What is it that you're doing? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, there's a, it, it, it's often that I see that come through. I saw, I saw one this morning. I was like, Oh, yep. There's another. Yeah. Does fling already have any petty songs? We do. Um, and, and we play, uh, we play, listen to our heart and American girl. Oh, and yeah. Yep. And I, and I really, I want to add, uh, you wreck me. Cause that one, that was just, just such it. a great tune. We talked about it last week and it reminded yeah. me, I'm like, oh yeah, we got to add that one. But, Love um, it. we, well, <laughs> we had a Halloween gig. Um, the club, it, it turns out, even though we booked it with them back, we had a fling fest schedule for Halloween, uh, that we booked back in January when we put all the dates together with this club that we do these with and just found out last night that they double booked it. So I don't know what we're doing on, on the 28th this, uh, this year, but our plan that we were sort of loosely discussing was to do a set of, uh, all dead guy tunes or dead artist tunes. So, you know, for Halloween, right. We, yeah. we dress as, as, as people, artists gone by and play. So funny. Someone just, propose that same thing to me like really you need a you need a prince tune you need yeah. an eagles tune you right. need a uh, a, a bowie Jerry, tune a jerry garcia tune a bowie yeah. tune yep yeah 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 uh, so we we started looking morose. at our list it's like oh yeah we we don't even need to add anything like we got we've got this covered <laughs> and then it's like hey should we add some stuff from people that aren't dead and maybe go after like some of the newer tunes that are out there <laughs> We're a little, a little overweighted on this one. This is a very strange conversation, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they all? <laughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my petty one, I'm really excited about it. It's at a, uh, like a restaurant, an outdoor, um, it's at, a, it's at a winery and, you know, they have like an outdoor restaurant as part of their tasting room. Sure. And, you know, it'd be about 200 people and um, set list is in place. It's another one of those exercises where I, I chose guys who I know can play. Right. I'm like, here's a song list. We're going to have one shot at a rehearsal, you know, so you're on your own to bring your best, you know, come and then let's just play. And I'm really uh, two of the guys I've never played with before. That's and, what you were saying last week. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yep. And uh, actually, one guy uh, actually dropped out due to personal reasons, and I had to replace him real quick. So the, the keyboard player oh. and uh, Nick was nice enough to say he'd step in and do it. So, and, you know, the, it's, that's a, a, another interesting thing. You know, I somewhat have an understanding. Some of it is it's fun to play with other people. I love my house rocker guys. And so um, I don't want them to feel snubbed. Right. Uh, and I don't think we've ever hit that. And some of it is truly like. I have a sense of what's going on in your life. And would this be like you learning a bunch of stuff for a one-time gig? You know, do I want to call in that favor versus do you, do I want to risk so you know, you know them feeling snubbed about something? Yeah. And so um, actually I'd said to Nick, you know, I didn't call you about this one because I assume, you know, I know what you've got going on in your life. He said, you know, these are three, four chord songs. I think I could, I, I think <laughs> I could have muddled my way through this one. And it turns out he's the one who's going to do the gig, which is good. But, um, but um it, yeah, it's all those things. It's like a little bit of fun to dabble and play with other people. Totally fun, fun to for play my with other people. Yeah. yeah, fun for my personal brand to you know kind of get out there and and uh, and you know uh, you know not be a one trick pony. Yes. Uh, where I guess with acoustic madness, I guess that would make me a two trick pony. But um, well, you that's know, true. Yeah, yeah. They're just kind of fun things to get out and do. So anyway, the set list is really fun. Um, it was hard to cut it off. There's so many songs. The biggest thing about the petty stuff for me is I. I'm amazed at how much I knew, how much is just flowing right out of me as soon as it, words too. And like I've shared many, many, many times, memorizing lyrics is way harder for me than memorizing forms of songs or, you know, chord progressions. Um, but it, it's truly like music that I'm just feeling right 
right from inside. And, and it's really, it's really not a stressful thing to woodshed this. It's more a kind of like a emoting thing, which yeah. is really cool. That's good. That's uh that's how it should be. Right. I yeah. mean, it, it, although the, the other side of that learning stuff that you have no concept of, can I mean, there's a stress associated with it for sure, but that also allows you to expand a little bit. So, I mean, there's there's, there's good to both sides of it. Everything's a learning opportunity. Yeah, without a doubt. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it is nice when you get to just sort of slip on the comfortable shoes and, and go play as opposed yeah. to, uh oh, I'm walking in heels. I don't know how to do this. So, yeah. Cool. So last That's thing good. I wanted to yeah, share man. is um, so we're getting ready to start these drummer auditions. I just want to give you an update on that. So, oh, yeah. So we're going to take three weeks in November. Um, we're finalizing the song list. So you you shared some really useful um, tips about this, you know, about how to prep, about how to organize the comings and goings of the participants of the audition. About um, And the best thing that you gave me that I really enjoy is like, take the songs. We're going to do five songs. Yep. Organize them like a set and see how well, the, the in this case, the drummer... Um, facilitates the flow of that little mini set that you're doing. I love that so much. That, I stole that right from Gary when he did the Uptown auditions. Yeah, it's and great. It's great. Oh, God. So I'll just Brilliant. give some broad direction and see what they do with it. And so we're going to do one song that requires a lot of wood shedding. One song. I'm not going to even put names to it right now. One I was going to say, okay, you're intentionally avoiding the names. That's I'm, fine. I'm intentionally avoiding names. Yeah. One song that is well known, but is a very specific feel. Yeah. The American Girl Factor, for those of you that missed that episode, it may or may that's not be it. that song, but but that's it. Yep. yep. Um, one song that is quite specific technical drumming, you know, yep. it's, it's, you know, something that you, you got to show your, your, your discipline and your range. Um, I guess another song that we know we're going to do is another one that has a very specific feel and vibe to it. Uh, and then the fifth song is to be named later. So we're almost there. Um, again, two drummers per night. OK, uh, here's a question. That's you, smart because you the, otherwise you, the band gets gonna, is going to get burned out. Yeah. Well, this is the thing I'm going to say is, is I love your thoughts. Do you do you get together after the last guy leaves each night and compare notes or does he just say, everybody, keep your notes until the end? You know, at, the, at some point in time, these are all going to be very good drummers. I mean, there should be no stinkers in here based upon what we who we know we're inviting. Sure. These are these are degrees of, of subtleties of what people are going to be hearing about this stuff. Any thoughts about how to discern when it's all degrees of good, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, wonderful. Yeah. How do you, how do you find it? So, so to me, it was about willingness to do the woodshedding. That's like one thing. Yeah. Oh no, there's a lot of factors. That's right. Yeah. I, I think so. The, 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 the advice I can share is relating to a completely different story when Lisa and I, I don't know, uh, it wasn't a hundred years ago, but it feels like it. We're trying to decide whether we were, mo we were moving out of new England and we had narrowed it down to either San Francisco or Austin. In the end, we chose Austin. So we played. Dude, dude, you I, would have made my life so much easier if you would have chosen San Francisco. I, yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, we chose Austin. We lived there in Austin. We started Mac observer and because of Mac observer, you and I met. So uh, it's boom. possible. I, I have a feeling if we had chosen the Bay area, Given the fact that I play and you play, we would have run into each other at some point. We were destined to do this, right? Destined. But, but yes, it, I, I understand. But we <laughs> we um, we planned a two-week trip. We went to Austin for a week and San Francisco for a week and loved both places. Uh, still two of my favorite cities. We vowed not to discuss it until we got home because we didn't want to like we were just like, let's just, you know, enjoy the trip. We'll savor it and then we'll discuss it when we get back so that we can really kind of reflect properly. And we got about halfway through San Francisco and I honestly don't remember which one of us it was that that broke first, but it was obvious we needed to have a conversation. It was like, OK, we're like we're, we're not even being willing to like, we're not even interested in talking about the things that we like here. It's obvious we're both hesitant. Let's have this conversation. It was like, well, and we both felt the same way. We loved San Francisco, 
But we were coming from, you know, big city on the coast, New York, right? And or near, you know, suburbs of big city on the coast. And that's what we would have wound up with in San Francisco. It would have been suburbs of big city on the coast. Two completely different cities. We were both aware of that. But it was obvious we each wanted a real change of pace. And that's what Austin delivered for us. And we knew it would. So... Uh, so we had that conversation halfway through and the rest of the trip, we just enjoyed the heck out of, of vacationing in San Francisco and, and everything was better. So that said, I think going into this with the attitude of we're not going to talk about it is the right thing, because if if the right person comes along on, you know, audition number three of six or even one of six. You're going to know that and everybody's just sort of going to crack at the same time and say, "Okay, we're all looking around like we know that this is the person like let's let's fulfill our obligation. Let's you know, let's play with the other ones just to make sure. But we're all on the same page here. Right. Like that. If that happens, I I think I think you want to put the wall up so that it's not just a free for all, because otherwise you're going to be nitpicking every little thing. And you guys are in the going to be in the middle of audition number four, and you're going to be thinking about, well, I like this drummer, but I know based on what Nick said, he likes this other guy. And so you're going to, you know, try and like lobby for the, it, it, it's going to get weird. Mm. I think, I think it's best to, to plan to avoid it. And unless there's an obvious discussion to be had. Got it. All right. That's my advice, but you know, I don't have to go through it. So and again, if we were, if we were just to like brainstorm a list, so obviously it's like, does he do his homework? Yep. Is he a good guy? How's his meter? Yep. Right. Yep. Um, how intuitive is he? Yep. What's his sense of humor like? Yeah. Is he like, a good guy? Is yep. he is he a good fit? Yeah. That right. And that well, that's the question you're trying to answer, right? And then you're breaking it down to these these other things. But yeah, is this person a good fit? That's the question that's the that's the the only important question. And because there's you're not going to find somebody that checks all the boxes. As we said, when you, you know, started down this path, Joe probably doesn't check all the boxes, but Joe's the right guy and yeah. has been for 15 years because he grew with this band together. Yeah. So, you, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And and I think that's worth bearing in mind that no one is going to check them all and nobody is the perfect drummer. The only... Uh, we have not had to audition very many people. We've, we've done guitarists a couple of times. We've done trombone players a couple of times. Like we did a formal audition for trombone players. Yeah. And uh, the guy who we chose during that, um, he had a vibe to him and he had an edge to his soloing that just kind of, you know, made everybody light up. And uh, that's how that guy got the gig. I don't know. I, I, you know, for guitarists, the only red flag that I've learned over the time, like, again, there's a lot of fine players out there. There's a lot of technically adept players. Always. The, we one time went with a guy who was the better technically adept player, even though he didn't woodshed the songs that we asked him to. He became the best of the, of the available choices at the time. Um, you know, singing guitar players, guys who could handle harmony and, and sure. that type of stuff. And it was the worst decision in the history of the band. I mean, it was, yeah. I, I mean, it, not, not that, not that his presence disrupted the band. He was just not a good guy to have with us. And, um, it, you know, animosity nine to one was, was growing in that direction. And I should have known that going into making that selection. So yeah, yeah, well, that, I, that's it. Right. The part of that fit is, is this the person that's going to work the same way as the rest of the band? Like you, you don't want somebody that comes in, that's not willing to do any work, but you also don't want some like super hyper type a overachiever that is going to come in and do 10 times the work of everybody else and then be pissed that nobody else is doing his yeah. amount of work. Yeah. Right. I mean, you gotta, you gotta sort of balance it out. Like how much time do you have to commit to this project, both for sure. gigs, both for rehearsals. And if it's like, Oh yeah, I, I'm independently wealthy. And all I want to do is play the guitar <laughs> and sit and just practice all the time. Like that might sound awesome. And if they're totally laid back, then it probably is awesome. But if they're like, like, I just sold my business for $4 billion and th- like, this is what I want to put all of my energy into next. It's like, well, yeah, let's talk first. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you're not the right, the right player. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Maybe they are. Cause they might, they might be able to, uh, you know, enhance your light lighting rig quite a bit. 
with that, some of that carving right, off a little of that four buy billion. Us do, buy us a new rehearsal facility. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, maybe so. <laughs> All, good. All right. I think that's good. We've gone in a lot of weird directions today, my friend. I liked it. I did too. Yeah, it's good. Skype behaved. So thank goodness for that. Yep. All right, folks. Well, that's uh, that's what we got for this week. We'll be back next week, though. You can find us in the meantime, giggabpodcast.com or slash Facebook at that same URL so that uh, we can chat. It's always fun. Take it easy, Dave. Always Take be. Performing. <laughs> <laughs>